Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, I think, okay, wait, well, last question, maybe. There's two questions. Last two questions. Yeah, you got the next one, please. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Which, which is the best beginner's guide to Tibetan Buddhism? What, what? What's the best beginner's guide to Tibetan Buddhism? Oh, best beginner's guide to Tibetan Buddhism? Uh, well, it's terrible to say, but I like my book in a revolution. <laughs> I feel bad saying that since it is only as Dalai Lama is my teacher. But, uh, you know, the Tibetans themselves, they're sort of used to, they sort of recite, okay, Four Noble Truths, you know, they have these categories that they recite, and the Dalai Lama explains them and deals with them in questions. But in a way, I think to sort of make connected to an American's quest for and, and sort of encounter that the Inner Revolution book, I think, is, is realistic. <laughs> it's very realistic. Although I have to give Alan Wallace credit for that. Do you? Yes, oh, I do. He, I first read it in one book he used, and instead of, which he said about realistic, you know, usually in the Eightfold Path, people say right view, right motivation, right action, right speech, right, 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 right and wrong, you know, which because they're thinking, they're trying to make it into a religion from the time they met Buddhism, and then they want, they feel that and religions are supposed to come from an authority, and then give you a rule, and then you're either right or wrong, you know, whereas in Buddha's case, he really wasn't a prophet, and basically he's telling people, God can't help you, Me, actually God can't help you or harm you, I mean, different gods can, and there's one more powerful one, can't help or harm, but can't save you completely from suffering. You have to do that yourself. And that was his main thing. And the way you do that is not by believing something, it's by experiencing something through, through you know, cultivating uh, insight, mindfulness and insight, and, um, and concentrate, developing a higher ability to concentrate your mind, and learning. You know? And so, um, uh, so therefore, the positive is realistic, and the distorting and the unpositive is unrealistic. And we suffer because we're unrealistic. You know, we think we're the center of the universe, and the universe doesn't agree <laughs> in the most annoying manner. And, then, and not only that, the other beings in the universe think they're the center, and then they annoy with us because we don't agree that they are, and so on. So, so reali the great thing about using realistic is, it, 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 it celebrates the Buddha's claim that he discovered what reality is and experienced it fully and couldn't make you do so, but that you also could be capable of that. And that's the way you'll be happy because luckily, reality is happiness. We know just, to, just to get real love, since that's the title of the seminar in there, reality is love, actually, the Buddhist Buddha said. The third noble truth is his description of reality, which is nirvana. And nirvana means being blown away. And then it can be misinterpreted as meaning it means it simply not exist, you know, being blown out of existence. But like, you know, like a gangster would say, I took out my gun and I blew him away. <laughs> That's not that kind of blown away. It's the person who went to the, either the rock concert or the Beethoven concert and said, how was it? And he says, I was blown away, it was so beautiful. And what do they mean by that? They mean that their normal feeling of kind of dissatisfaction and angst and like, what am I doing here? What's going on? Was temporarily suspended by the beauty of that particular reality of that art form. You know? So Buddha's discovery is that the world is actually such an art form, not by somebody, it's just not, it's, it's nature. And, uh, and the way we can discover that ourselves and, and therefore there's, and all he can do is help teach us methods of how to become more realistic. You know, we have a saying in the West, ignorance is bliss, which implies that reality, if you know too much of it, will make you unhappy. Whereas in the Buddhist thing, ignorance is suffering, and wisdom, knowledge of reality, is bliss, you know, brings bliss. So, so anyway, I don't want to go at length too much, except to encourage you that, that uh, reality is love. That's what it is. Real love means reality. Nirvana. And uh, when you attain nirvana, you can't help yourself but loving every being because you real reality flows through you as love for every being. You can't help it. You just feel so good. It's like when you feel really good. You're kind of benevolent even to some person who normally 
you know, it's lo lovo, irritant. <laughs> right? Now, the sleep yoga, since we're going to break now, the sleep yoga is when you fall asleep, don't think that you're lying in a dark space of nothingness. You do want the lights out, and you do want noise, and you want to sink quietly into this nice, calm, organic cotton pillow at Minma, <laughs> and enjoy that. But, and you will go unconscious at some moment. You'll let go, and you'll drop out of your five senses, and you'll go into interior space. And hopefully won't have any disturbing dream, anyway, and we'll have even some just pure deep sleep. But, but where you actually go, and this is in the so-called Book of the Dead, you go beneath this place of darkness into a place called clear light, which is a plane of infinite energy. It's like the nirvana plane, according to Buddhist science. You could call it, and yet it's not really a plane apart from this, because this is made of that, made of it, actually. But we normally have no access to it, except when we deeply sleep. But the, but the, the yoga is to just imagine, or remind yourself, once I fall deep asleep, I'm not going to be lying in a dark space of nothingness, because then I wouldn't feel refreshed, my cells wouldn't feel renewed in the morning if I was lying in nothingness, because nothingness would give me no energy. And instead, I'm lying in a bed, in a bath of infinite energy, benevolent, positive energy that's just there for me, to re restore me so when I wake up, I'm going to be ready to go to yoga, <laughs> level one or level ten, whatever it is, I'll be ready for it. That's Menla sleep yoga, okay, taking a moment to mindfully fall asleep, okay? So if there are other questions, please hold the question, unless it's a really burning one, and uh, because you need sleep, you had a travel today, through the spring-like day that we oddly had today, and then now we have the wind, and we go home, and get cozy, and go to sleep, okay? Okay? All the best. Have a nice, nice. sweet dream.